Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign where I am just time warping. Ah! Oh my gosh, the glare! Oh wow, okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm with this surface science pack stuff. Okay, we are receiving solar, and I'm just interested in finding out. We put this down a couple of episodes ago. Is this working? I don't really think it is. No, I think I'm going to have to get some Kerbals down here. Specifically a scientist, I think, to uh, start this up again. But right now, why don't we get ourselves back to the Kerbal Space Center? Where we have the Otter X-1 just taking off from the runway a few minutes ahead of sunrise. And we're going to be doing a crew rotation. You can see I got four Kerbals down there at the bottom. There's actually a fifth. There's McNan. Also got Carol, Bob, Valentina, and Jebediah. Look at all those level threes. That is awesome. We're going to be doing a crew rotation, getting some folks back up into space, freshly leveled up so that we can, for the most part, populate the Karayan 1 and get her new crew up there as well. We're gonna be putting Bob and Carol into the laboratory module that is on Kerbin Station. I'm hoping that two level three scientists will be able to, uh, well, create some science for me without me having to do too much. Here comes the sunrise. Yeah, I still do have that glare. It's so bad here in the atmosphere. I've been playing around a bit with the settings on uh, stock visual enhancements and planet shine and scatterer. Uh, I think I might have messed something up. I'll try and see if we can get that fixed up a little bit better in the future. I have been working on my ascents with this vehicle. I'm finding that if I keep my pitch lower than I've done in the past, it really allows me to build up speed and really get those whiplashes working efficiently. I seem to get up more quickly this way as well. And it's a good thing I've been working on it because I seem to have picked up an extra resource. There's some liquid ammonia up there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Some mod updated, I really expect or suspect Kerbal Interstellar is responsible for adding that particular resource. Oh, we're not building up speed too dramatically, so uh, let's fire up those toroidal engines. I've also learned not to dilly-dally with those. Uh, as soon as you see that you're not building up speed quickly anymore, fire them up and pitch up. And now what we're doing is we're getting our apoapsis up to 80 kilometers, at which point we will cut those engines. Taking out the set of reaction wheels that were embedded in the center of this vehicle. So the only reaction wheels I now have are in the cockpit. I was finding those reaction wheels were somehow generating drag for me. And I figured I don't really need them, so I got rid of them. And uh, that's 80 kilometers. Okay, so we'll cut the engines and we'll just coast up to our apoapsis so we can do our circularization. Yeah, I got 200 units of liquid ammonia up here. Yeah, they've been added to the pre-coolers that are between the air intakes and those whiplash engines, which makes sense. Man, there's 140 kilograms of liquid fuel in each one, or liquid ammonia, sorry, in each one. That's 280 kilograms I didn't have before. Okay, we'll shut this, oh, when I shut it down, I got boil off warnings. This is interstellar for sure. Okay, I got this valve, purge valve. Let's see if we can not purge this. Oh shoot, no, 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 no. It's not going down. I was purging something else. I would prefer not to think what I was purging just there. <laughs> okay. I don't need it anymore, so it would be nice to get rid of it. I need it while the whiplashes are going. But I do not need those jet engines anymore. Even on descent, I won't. I might use them a little bit, but not too much. Okay. Well, maybe we can get an engineer to move those around. But right now, we need to finish off our circularization. And once that was done... Oh, I got 180 meters per second of delta V left in this vehicle. So despite the extra mass, that might have been one of my most efficient uh, ascents ever. So pretty happy with that. 
Well, it's just a simple matter to do the rendezvous with the station, which you've seen only about a gazillion times. I apologize for how long it's been since I last produced an episode for this series. It's just been a busy time this last month, both at work and with the fam. It takes a long time to not only edit and narrate these episodes, but just to find the time to uh, do the gameplay portion of it as well. There's a lot of gameplay that gets compressed into these episodes that you see. But I hope in the meantime that you have been enjoying my other series that I've been producing. Should also talk about what's coming up in this episode. Uh, last episode, we rendezvoused with Asteroid Jupe, and we're going to be trying to complete that contract by inserting it into an orbit around Kerbin, and then seeing if we cannot get it over to the moon as well. And we'll be doing a launch, the launch of Moho 3, my first ion-powered craft. For the meantime, we've completed our transferring of our crew to their various stations, including Carol and Bob being put into the lab module. So let's check out how much science I'm producing here. Oh yeah, and as was pointed out in the comments last episode, the stock lab module can level up crew as well. Nobody needs to level up though. Okay, oh, uh, I guess I gotta start research on here and looking up. Yep, there we are. We're producing 11.6 science per day. All right. Oh, I really got to get more scientists. I got two more labs in and around the Kerbin system. I'd love to get level two level three scientists into each of them. Get the same thing happening all over the place. In the meantime, partner has moved that purge valve over to the pre-cooler check to see if we can now vent off that liquid ammonia before we head back down to the surface. Alright, the liquid ammonia is going down. Let's check our other resources. Doesn't look like anything else is going down. It's not so good. It looks like I'm venting the right thing. Let's check the other pre-cooler here. Oh, that one's going down as well. Good, so I won't have to move the valve. It should be pointed out that this is producing a tiny bit of thrust. If we take a look at our inclination up here, you'll see that it is increasing, though very, very slowly. This tiny amount of thrust is even affecting this massive station. But once this was accomplished, it was time for Jebediah to bring the X-1 back home. I'll say right out, I, I, I actually love flying this thing. Of my three different space planes I have right now. This is my favorite one to fly. Even with this apparent overshoot, it was still pretty easy to get it down onto the runway, though I suppose this is in no small part due to Jeb's mad flying skills. Yeah, this is the way Jeb flies when he's not worried about somebody vomiting back in the crew cabin. Also, what doesn't hurt is that, unlike my other two space planes, this one also flies very effectively as a jet. Once the air is thick enough, we can fire up the jet engines and just fly it around. It still has a respectable amount of fuel left, so again, turning around and getting back to the Kerbal Space Center, not an issue. It also has a tiny amount of oxidizer left. It would have been nice to vent that as well, because clearly once I did the descent burn, I didn't need the oxidizer anymore. But where Bartner moved that valve, it could only vent liquid ammonia, so I'd have to get another valve on here. What actually brings me to another point. Uh, some kindly comments pointed out last episode that I've been using Kerbal Construction Time wrong. Instead of recovering normally, I can actually uh, recover to the space plane hangar directly, and that dramatically increases turnaround time on vehicles like this one. Uh, one of the issues, though, is that it recovers it the way it is so if I want to take this into the space plane hangar and add a valve I gotta rebuild the whole thing again which will take a lot of time so instead I'm gonna find some way to get some more valves up to Kerbin Station bring this up to Kerbin Station and get an engineer to put it together for me here it is I'll show you how this works with Kerbal construction time okay that's right open that up again okay we select the space plane hangar and there it is recover active vehicle now to be fair, that is rather hidden. 
Okay, uh, KCT, check under the space plane, hangar, and oh my goodness, 30 minutes turnaround time. That's just the time to refuel the thing. I don't know if it refuels it based on the fuel levels in the config file. I would think that's what it would do, as opposed to just fill the tanks right up. If it just fills the tanks right up, uh, this is going to be problematic. Also, of course, if you have to do things like install payloads or add boosters like you would for a shuttle, uh, this is pretty useless. So it is kind of limited, but nice feature for jets, that's for sure. And from single stage to orbit space planes, let's move on to something, well, a little bit more mundane. This was a contract to test the TRXL stack separator. I've had a few of these in the past, including some transmitting science from different locations from which, you know, on Minmus and on the moon, I have lots of things in orbit and on the surface that's very easy just to transmit stuff from. Usually I don't show these kinds of things, but I wanted to sort of show that, you know, these things are kind of going on in the background. Not every contract is exciting or challenging. Sometimes you just got to do these just to sort of pay the piper, so to speak. And one of those regard, uh, rewards from paying that piper is upgrading the space plane hangar now to tier three. That's pretty exciting. And the other reason I was show, I wanted to show you these sort of missions, even though I don't show you all of them by any stretch of the imagination, was just to sort of, uh, you might be noticing, some eagle-eyed viewers might be noticing when things like the Kerbal Construction Time building queue comes up, they might be noticing these crafts, they're typically, I just leave them as untitled, and you might be wondering what that's all about. Well, it's all about these kinds of lame missions. But enough for this. Let's get on to something new. This is MOHO 3, obviously my third probe on its way, well, to MOHO, if that makes sense. But before I get into what the actual mission is, I want to draw attention to the fact that the launch time is 1.38 and I am launching into an inclination of 12.8 degrees towards the south. Yes, I do need to launch at a particular time and at a particular inclination to match to get into the parking orbit that the window transfer planner mod <laughs> tells me that I should get into in order to do my transfer out to MOHO with as much efficiency as I can muster. And I've done a number of these in the past, though it has been a number of episodes since I have done one, but if you're interested in details on how to, how to calculate this parking orbit and how to use the window transfer planner mod, might recommend this supplemental episode that I put to episode 86 quite some time ago. But enough of that, let's talk about the mission. The mission is obviously to go to MOHO, but once there I am to rendezvous with a vessel. I do have a mapping satellite in orbit around MOHO right now. And that rendezvous is going to be fun because I am playing with remote tech, which means that I'll have about a two minute signal delay to contend with. Uh, yeah, well, fun might not have been the best word, but it is going to be interesting, that's for sure. But the mission's not going to end there. I then have to take this probe and bring it back to Kerbin. Uh, so that's clearly going to take quite a lot of Delta V, and that is why this is the, my first vessel that's going to be pushed by an ion propulsion drive system. And all told, this thing had, or just the probe, sorry, just the probe on the top that's going to Moho has 16 kilometers per second of Delta V available to it. Should be plenty. That is, as long as I don't do anything silly. You see, with Kerbal construction time, there can be a long time between when I actually design the vehicle and when I finally launch the thing. And I'm talking about real time and measured in weeks of real time and well sometimes I can lose track of what it is that I am doing and this is one of these situations where actually I forgot that part of the mission was to actually get back to Kerbin. And that comes into play here because once I had achieved my parking orbit and started planning my transfer out to MOHO well, about four days ahead of when the window transfer planner mod was telling me that I should be doing my transfer, I ended up 
with a burn that got me this Eve encounter, and I, I, I couldn't let it go. I thought, you know what, I could swing by Eve, I could pick up some, some science along the way and still get to Moha. I looked at the fact that I had 16 kilometers per second of Delta V and went, well, geez, I, I crazily overbuilt this thing. Of course I can still get myself to Moho easy peasy with this. Whatever my Eve encounter ends up doing to my particular trajectory, again, forgetting the fact that I am supposed to get back to Kerbin afterwards. This is after achieving an orbit as well. Get into orbit, break orbit from Moho and get back to Kerbin. But like I said, at this point in my gameplay, I did to realize that I had to do a little bit more than just simply get an orbit about Moho. So here I am coming up to my burn less than 20 minutes after achieving orbit. Now this burn is just a uh, sort of setup burn. I'm gonna do this uh, this ejection in two parts. This one is just to raise my apoapsis up uh, a little bit shy of the moon. And then we'll ride that around and about a day and a half later we'll get ready to do our main burn. And I'm trying to figure out how long this burn is going to take. I mean better burn time saying about 75 seconds but it, it's clear that it's assuming that the whole burn is going to be done with this LV909 engine. You can see that uh, I actually have a stage here that's about 1200 meters per second this sort of pre-stage its job is to give me my escape velocity and then the ion drive will take on after that but of course that drive is only going to be pulling about maybe a tenth of a g something like that so i did a bit of back of the envelope type of calculations figured it would take really closer to about seven minutes and then i noticed up there kerbal engineer it was already taking this into account kerbal engineer you're amazing it's saying right here it's going to take almost seven minutes to perform the burn so at about three and a half minutes to my maneuver node, it was time to punch it. As already mentioned, this is just a boring old chemical rocket, but it provides a heck of a lot more thrust than the ion drive does. So it's, oh, I believe we just achieved escape velocity, I was just about to mention. So it's nice to have these sort of, you know, higher thrust stages to help you get that escape velocity before you're ready to uh, kick in the ion drive. Uh, just looking at curb in there and noticing absolutely no clouds from the environmental visual enhancements mod. Something is clearly not working right. I'm going to have to look at that. But right now, I need to complete this burn and get this thing on its way to Eve and then see if I can get it also on its way to Moho after that. But as you can tell, this stage is getting pretty close to being dry. Get ourselves into a position here so we can see it drop away behind us. Okay. And now it's time for that ion drive. Ooh, nice blue light there. Let's turn this over and see. Ooh, a little bit of a plume happening. Completely silent, of course. Ion propulsion. That little bit of an animation is coming from real plume. I think it is anyway. I'm not sure if uh, since 1.2, if stock has added in a bit of an animation for the ion drive. It used to be just like this blue light. Maybe it still is. I like that little, little bit of animation there. And in case, for those that may not know how an ion drive, the basic principle behind it works, obviously it works with ions, but uh, to be a little bit more specific, what it's working with is xenon gas, that's what we use in KSP, and actually that's a pretty um, typical standard thing to use right now. It's a xenon gas. Xenon gas is a noble gas. That's one of the nice things about it. So it doesn't, it's chemically inert, so it's not going to react with things uh, in the spacecraft and mess things up so that's kind of nice it's not going to be toxic or dangerous or corrosive or anything like that it is easy to ionize which is a good thing and it's got a reasonably high atomic number which means it has a reasonably high mass for a gas so and high mass means higher thrust and with this we need all the thrust that we can get basic principle behind this is to use electricity to ionize the gas, that means just to charge it, to knock off some electrons so it becomes positively charged. I believe that's the way it goes rather than adding on electrons. 
And then either using, and I think KSP is not particularly clear on this part, either using a magnetic field or an electric field to propel those ions out the back end, thus generating thrust. You can see this is going to take a little while. Even with that, I know there are those out there that feel that the ion driving KSP is overpowered. I mean, it certainly is overpowered compared to its real-life counterparts. But frankly, I don't want these burns taking any longer than they already are. I think from a game perspective, I'm, I'm fine with the way uh, the ion drive works. Anyway, once this burn was complete, there was a need for a correction burn once we got out of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence, and we will be getting back to that very shortly, but uh, in the meantime, I had to hop out to the Arm B and its A-class asteroid as it gets ready to perform its capture burn and complete this contract. And it was last episode that you saw me rendezvous with this asteroid and then set up this burn and I still have quite a lot of fuel so this is going to be pretty much a formality and then what I want to do is once this capture is complete and this contract is complete I want to see if I cannot arrange myself a little rendezvous with the moon See if I can uh, connect this to the other asteroid that I already have there that's forming the basis for Station Yoy that is in orbit about the moon. But you're just about there. Oh, we got our capture. We're just going through the formality of just finishing off this burn. There we go. It's contract complete. Excellent. And then it only took uh, another 60 meter per second burn. I got really lucky here, a 60 meter per second burn out towards Apoapsis, which is only seven days from now. Gets me a moon encounter in just over 12 days. This is awesome. It's almost like I planned it. <laughs> anyway, we'll be getting back to this in a future episode. Why don't we get ourselves back to Moho 3, which is now outside of Kerbin's SOI. And I have me a 280 meter per second correction burn that gets me buzzing by Eve. The unfortunate thing about this is uh, I am launching. I, I did my transfer too early. I think I already implied that. And I'm going to need about a 3.2 kilometer per second burn at my closest approach to Eve in order to get my orbit to swing out enough to slow me down so I can rendezvous with Moho. I don't know. Maybe as I get closer to Eve a little bit later, I'll re-explore my options. See if there's not something a little bit cheaper that I can do. This thing's going to be getting to Eve in just 102 days, which is going to be well before the Kermes 2, which I launched quite some episodes ago. Uh, whoa, whoa, my electricity is, uh, is going down. Why is my electricity going down? Okay, that panel seems to be doing fine. Got plenty of exposure. What about this one? Oh, zero. Must be behind in the shadow of uh, the one in front of it. The sun is... Uh, we got our back end more or less pointed towards the sun. So I can start rotating this a little bit. Get some exposure in all those panels. Last thing I want to do is run out of electricity and make this burn even take longer. Anyways, I was saying, uh, yeah, this thing's going to be getting to Eve way before the Kermes 2 gets there, uh, despite the Kermes 2 being launched quite some time ago. A little bit more of an express route, I suppose. There we go. That's got some exposure on the solar panels now. And by the time this burn was done, and even subtracting off the 3.2 km per second burn that I currently have plotted in and around Eve, that still leaves me about 10 km per second still left in the vehicle to get my capture around Moho and then return to Kerbin. I think that should be enough. I haven't gone through the numbers personally, but I think it should do it. I'll definitely explore this in more detail as we get closer to Eve and try to refine my mission plan just a little bit. And it was only after completing this burn that I finally took a look at what my contract was 
and noticed that I had to return back to Kerbin. All the way through all the plotting you've seen up to this, I hadn't clued into that now. Now I'm looking at it. Oh, man. They say you really have to read the fine print on these contracts, but forget the fine print. I have a tough enough time just reading the bullet points. Oh, well. I think I should still be able to pull this one off. But you know that's going to have to be for a future episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.